courage to keep my hand. A charge to keep my hand. I'm gonna need your help. I lean over to your neighbor. I'm gonna touch you, preacher. Lean over to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Oh neighbor. Oh neighbor. Brandon is going to preach about. Brandon is going to preach about. A charge to keep. A charge to keep. I have. I have. Let's pray about it. Lord God, make a way. Lord Jesus, save today. Holy Spirit, have your way. Amen. I'd, I'd like to. I'd like to. To to preface the sermon by a few simple remarks. I, I, I would would that I would be an expository preacher every time I took the pulpit. But when I, I, I embarked upon this specific message, the Lord gave it to me actually some years ago before I was ever known thinking that I would be a preacher. Yeah. I was at your bank, but we were sitting on lives at, at the Civic Center, the little new place out there. Uh, and everybody was giving words. Everyone was giving words. And the Lord impressed to him a charge to keep a hand in the heart. Yeah. He put it on the heart. And I said, if I have words, I'm going to talk him through this hymn. And God just gave me how to break the scripture down. And I was, again, this was before I said I was a preacher and all of those good things. But when I was asked to do this, the Lord brought this back to my memory. And it ran by me. But I got to the book of 2 Timothy, specifically 2 Timothy, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus. They are considered the pastoral epistles. Uh, these books were written from Paul directly to Pastors, I'm not going to go too deep into the historicity of the text and all those good things. If you want to talk about that, we can talk about that afterwards. But what you need to know about 2 Timothy is, this was the most personal letter yes. that Paul had ever written right. in our whole entire New Testament. Yes. When you read 2 Timothy, he gets very specific with his spiritual son, yes. Timothy. Yes. Uh, 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 if you read a little bit further into the text, you'll understand that Paul is closing the door on his life. In 2 Timothy. Paul's end is very near. That's why we can pick it up in verse 8 of chapter 4. He says, I've run the race. I've been poured out as a drink offering. He knows that his departure is at hand, but before he leaves, he must instill what God gave him into his spiritual son. So that the doctrine could continue to be sound. So that they could reprove and rebuke so that they could teach people what God did, not what you said God did. All right. All right. All right. I got a lot of ground to cover. I'm going to keep moving. My brothers and sisters, our culture and our worldview, they are built on these ideals of pomp and circumstance. Yeah. Yeah. Everything around us has a ceremony. Yeah. Everything that we're a part of has a grand uh, my notes say regalia, but that just means big outfits. Everybody wants to put on airs and seem like they're more than what they actually are. And they do these things in hopes of impressing you. And in hopes of impressing you. But then there are other times, very meaningful moments where our words transform into legal and binding contracts. When we say things, and what we say has the essence of God wrapped up totally all in it. As a matter of fact, uh, when God made the heavens and the earth in the beginning in Genesis, he created everything and everything was without form or without void. He created Adam, but he told Adam to name everything yeah. because it's by the affirmation of the mouth. Yeah. Yeah. I feel preaching. It's, it's the affirmation of the mouth that sets things into place. It's what you say that makes things cemented. Uh, 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 uh. We've lost this notion of what you say because we got so many liars nowadays. It's okay, Brandon, I feel like preaching. We got so many liars nowadays that our words carry no weight. If I tell you my mom will be there on Tuesday, you'll probably see me next Thursday because our words carry no weight. And part of that is the inward condition of our hearts. We nasty. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So my heart is dirty, so I lie to you. So we don't have any uh, uh, established truth anymore. Our words carry no weight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it's, it's, it's this way in the world, and it's the same way in the church. As a matter of fact, John D. Rockefeller, he says, I believe in the sacredness of a promise. We're talking about Rockefeller, a billionaire. Yeah, yeah. You know, he didn't get all his money right. He says, I believe in the sacredness of a promise. That a man's word should be as good as his bond. Yeah. 
This is Rockefeller talking. My granddaddy said, son, you only got a couple things in this world, and one of them is your word. Come with your word. I know I got some hoodlums in here. Uh, 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 I got some street folks still. Uh, Method Man and ODD said it with Wu-Tang Clan. He said, word is bond. All right. Your word is your bond. And if you don't like them, Solomon says, uh, the wisest man on earth, he says, a good name, good name. is rather to be chosen than great riches. Your word, your word. what you say, All right. it establishes and it sets things in place. Uh, if, you, if, if you don't believe me, uh, when a cadet finishes firearm training and uh, first basic aid and CPR, self-defense, you know, they were really smart and they got a political science degree. After they graduate the police academy, just before joining the force, they must say these words in honor. I will never betray my badge, my integrity and character or the public trust. I will protect and serve. I believe they call that the oath of office, the oath of, of, the oath of office. So if, if, if our words aren't important, then why can I not become a police officer until I make that declaration? Uh, uh, how, about, how, about, how about this one? When a faithfully studious pre-med student has endured the MCAT, they've taken two years of anatomy, biochemistry, physiology, pharmacology, histology, embryology, microbiology, pathology, neurosciences, and then they take two to three more years to specialize. Before they can put on that right coat, they have to make a promise to do no harm. Uh, 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 uh. After Barack Obama had beat the Illinois Senate and he made it into the, the national, the, the Senate and to Congress, before he could become the very first uh, African American president, he had to say, I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of the President of the United States. And I will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, defend the Constitution of the United States. I believe they call that the presidential oath of office. If words aren't important, then why is everything that we do sealed by words? In the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy, we witness firsthand Paul's charge to Timothy. And we see what would become Timothy's oath of office. All right. We witness what will become his oath of office because your words have power. What power can be found in an oath? What prestige can be revealed in a promise? What hope is inspired through a charge? I'm so glad that you asked. It is through the charge that we are reminded of our very purpose. As we witness in the aforementioned examples, it is through the charge that we are held responsible to the very people that we promised to serve. Say it, say it. Mm -hmm. uh, as we jaywalk back into the text, it is through the charge that we perpetuate, we preserve, and we protect this gospel message. It's through the charge. Now, I didn't come to preach to everybody. God gave me some specific words for my daddy, but you can peek in on the conversation. Daddy, God says you have a charge. of the gospel. Yeah. There are many of us here. You have a charge. Yeah. My brothers and my sisters, uh, 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 the word declares that we all have the ministry of reconciliation. That means we all ministers. You know what? That means y'all have a charge too. Yeah. As we peruse the pericope of this particular passage, the texts are tailored to teach us four things. Four things. Reverend, Reverend. If we are to be faithful to the charge that God has given us, we must first remember Touch your neighbor and say, remember. Remember. 